A staunch supporter of Tibetan freedom movement, a close friend to His Holiness the Dalai Lama and the former president of Czechoslovakia, the late Václav Havel, he is Martin Bursik, the former Minister of Environment, Czech Republic, who is here in Dharamsala today, co-hosting Dialogue for Our Future, a call to climate action with several other climate activists, scientists and entrepreneurs. Let's talk more about Martin Bursik's ties with Tibet and Tibetan people's struggle, his work in saving the planet from a future for runaway climate changes, including call to climate action. Martin La, today you are here in Dharamsala co-hosting Dialogue for Our Future, a call to climate action. How did the idea come about of organizing this? Well, um, let's go back to the year uh, 2016 and His Holiness the Dalai Lama visited Prague so far for the last time. We as a Czech Support Tibet, the NGO, we were organizing a gathering of His Holiness with the public in front of a castle and uh, he was very happy because um, um, there were you know, more than a thousand people there and he felt very relaxed. We were singing John Lennon's Imagine by the end. We did this, a kind of, 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 of a model where there were uh, where there was a priest and there were singers and actors and it had a an atmosphere like through the Velvet Revolution in 1989 when we became became free. And by the end of the visit, His Holiness, uh, because we always discuss two issues: human rights in Tibet and how can we help Tibetans. Second issue: environment, because you know he knows I graduated environmental studies and I was twice minister. In, of environment and on an expert level I do climate change and renewable energy and so we started to discuss environment and he said Martin how about if you if you organize some conference dialogue gathering where people can discuss climate and also the solutions renewable energies that time he mentioned photovoltaic solar and wind and okay I, I took it seriously and I that started was when? 2016. Right. Uh, I started to prepare the event, but uh, then, you know, His Holiness stopped traveling. Originally, it ought to be in Prague. So I decided, let's move it to Dharamsala. And I invited other organizations like International Campaign for Tibet, uh, Iraq Research Institute from Bolzano, and and Tibet Policy Institute here. So we made a, a group to prepare it and we organized it and we are here now. Mm -hmm. So this is, the, this is the story. So in fact, it's been an idea of His Holiness. In between, because it took a, a long time, in between he published two important books. One, I did the translation into Czech, it's Ecology, Ethics and Interdependence. And the other book is called Our Only Home, an appeal to the to the world. So His Holiness has been all the way around, aside of many other issues, he's been concentrating on a climate crisis and he understands fairly well the connection with the Tibetan plateau and the importance of Tibetan plateau on a, on a global climate ecosystem. That's great. Uh, Martin, uh, talking about your um, first meeting with His Holiness the Dalai Lama, that is in 1998 when he visited Prague, right? Oh, yes. And then uh, following which you have uh, met His Holiness the Dalai Lama on several different occasions. Yes. Take us back to your experiences during the meetings. Oh, well. What made you meet him, I'll see say, him again and again? I mean, first meeting, I, I was so nervous, I, I, I almost haven't slept through the night. At uh, that time, my, my mom was still alive, and I said to my mother, what could be a gift for His Holiness? So she took some, you know, ancient teacup, so I brought the teacup, gave it to him. And then I showed him a black and white photographs. I used to be a climber, and in 1988, I was illegally on the expedition in Tibet. At that time, Tibet was, as Chinese said, Tibet is not closed, it is unopened. It's typical for the Chinese, you know. <laughs> That's the Chinese reality. So that time we were in Lhasa, there was a martial law in Lhasa. 
Then we crossed Nangpala, as many Tibetans escaped, and we did some climbing in the Mount Everest area. And I had this black and white photographs along with me, and show, I showed it to His Holiness. And suddenly he saw a photograph of yaks. He said, well, yaks, yaks, can I keep it? Can I keep it? For him, this was more than an ancient cup. That, then a photographer made a photographs outside of a meeting room, and he said, well, you, and he, you know, on a photograph, he said, you've been working, you've been taking photographs of all the people I'm meeting, but you don't have a photograph with me. And then he, you know, reorganized it so that the photographer is having a photograph. Is his only. So he was, you know, thinking of that person. He should also would like to have memories. Interesting is that for the last meeting, we met His Holiness in Manali in 2018. We took the photographer along with us. His Holiness recognized him, and they they did, and and, and so, so they had a nice meeting. So, I mean, on on all the, uh, His Holiness, he loves laughing. This is what he has got in common with with. Yes, Václav. I was going to ask you because yeah. Václav Havel, uh, you have met His Holiness several times. I was told that uh, you are close with Václav Havel yes. as well, yes. and in fact, your wife is uh, writing a book. It's almost exactly. completing a book on the life of Václav Havel, right? Yes. Yes. So. Uh, and I believe and I trust you have now you have known him personally quite yes, well. Yes. So what do you see the similarities between these oh, two um, years? This is this is the what the book is going to be about. There are two co-authors. One of them is my my wife Catherine. So I'm looking forward for the book. They 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 found many very interesting aspects. Like when Václav Havel was in prison, he meditated. And how has it happened? Who, you know, sort of influenced him in it? And then, when he became a, a president, shortly after the Velvet Revolution, there are memories of the people around him. He was meeting at a brass castle. He said, "I got three dreams. I would like to invite the Pope, Jan Paul, Jan, Jan Paul II, at that time. I would like to invite Rolling Stones. I would like to invite the Dalai Lama." And people around him said, "Well." We can imagine Pope, okay, Rolling Stone, but Dalai Lama, you know, it's not the official head of state. This, you know, according to protocol, this can't work. But, you know, Václav Havel was a person of the principle. He was a dissident, you know, freedom fighter. He said, I don't mind, I want to meet His Holiness. You won't believe it, you know. Within two months, His Holiness was on a balcony of Archbishop Palais in Prague, Invited officially by, I was crying. I was that standing. Was I was just. It, that was it's in 1990, February 1990. First official invitation of mm. the president. Of us. They became very close friends. They had so much in common, and I, uh, I say, I mean, today, His Holiness was leaving the room, and he's evidently he was happy meeting people. Some people he knows. Again, having a personal contact after, you know, COVID isolation of all of us. He left the room and then he returned back and, you know, waved again. I said to people around me, this is Václav Havel, exactly, this is him. So, so, I mean, there are many similarities. Let's wait for the book. Oh, yes. And it'll be bilingual, it will be in Czech and English. And, and uh, so we will, we can read more about it here. Yeah. Uh, so you are a very strong supporter of Tibetan Freedom Movement. You have uh, founded Czech Support for Tibet. Uh, many of our viewers who would like to know about Czech Support for Tibet. The, the name of an organization, it's an interesting story. Six years ago, seven years ago, the Czech government, I mean, you mean I start with that, the foreign policy of free Czechoslovakia after the revolution was formed by Václav Havel and other Charter 77 dissidents, uh, Dinsbier and others. And it was based on a principle of universality of human rights. So wherever the human rights are violated, we should, you know, be loud and, and help the people and fight for that. And in a very small country, Czech Republic, 10 million people became you know, strong due to this principal policy formed by Václav Havel. 
And you know, some seven, six years ago, the, that time, the government changed it, and they, you know, started, you know, the pro-Chinese policy, you know, red carpets, and and uh, we were very afraid, you know, and we were said that, you know, you Tibetans would think, okay, we lost Czech Republic, and and you know that His Holiness would have been sad about it. So we we have a house which is just opposite the parliament building. If we put a Tibetan flag on our house, it looked like it's 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 just opposite the entrance to the parliament. So it, lo it looks like expression of the parliament idea. So we built we made a big billboard, you know, 14 to 5 meters. His Holiness and Václav Havel, and we put the, on a billboard, Mr. Prime Minister, you are mistaken. Czechs support Tibet. And this is how the name came out, Czechs support Tibet. And we are very political. Many organizations are, you know, non-political, and, and they say, you know, don't politicize the issue. It can't work. This is a fully political issue. Tibet was invaded. It's occupied, you know, since 1950. Uh, it's illegal, it's again, you know, international law. It has to be, you know, loudly described and fight for, for freedom of Tibetans. And um, so we're doing political things. Uh, maybe a most important one was during the visit of Xi Jinping in Park. We organized the demonstration, you know, a, a peaceful, pe peaceful demonstration in favor of human ri rights in Tibet and in Taiwan. Uh, it was legal, however, the police, you know, banned it. They did not let us to, to, to get to the uh, castle square. They were heavily equipped. And, um, okay, we decided to sue the government, the, the Ministry for the Interior, the city of Prague, the police of the Czech Republic, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, for, all the for, for physical you persons, <laughs> we paid, you know, all the costs of, of the lawyers, but the lawyers were kind. And, uh, and we lost, you know, the first trial we lost, and we were, you know, uh, we were shocked, you know, uh, just, you know, depressive. And then we went, got to the highest constitutional court. Well, we won it there. The constitutional court returned back to the courts, you know, below. We won it again, so, so this was a principal fight. Uh, so, you know, sometimes, sometimes success comes and it's, it's, it's important, you know, to believe in a change. And many times I'm saying that Tibet, I, I believe in a free Tibet. I was in Tibet in 1988. Uh, I want to visit Tibet again, but only upon the condition that Tibet is free. And I believe in it, you know, in 14 days, a week before the Velvet Revolution, I did not believe in a change, and it happened. So this is about the situation within the Communist Party in China. We know that the Communists, they, they love to eat each other, they fight, you know, fight for power. It's just a momentum that I believe will come, and, uh, you know, Tibet will be free. So, you know, with our small power, uh, we are trying, and we keep on trying to help. Thank you, Martin, for joining great, with us today. Great pleasure. Thanks. Thank you. And all the best. Free to best. Thank you very much. That was Martin Bursik, the former Minister of Environment, Czech Republic, who is also the founder of Czech Support Tibet. Thank you for joining us for In Conversation with Tibet TV.